Hi everyone and welcome to my brand new series of Where Async Goes to Die. This is a series of short videos in which I'm going to cover common async await mistakes. I have a strong feeling that after most of these videos, then you'll go back to your code base and you'll change a thing or two because these aren't going to be things that you see every day. These are mistakes that I don't see covered enough and I think it's important to cover. If you're new to the channel, then first of all, welcome. My name is Amichai. I do have a quick disclaimer that even though I work at Microsoft, I'm not talking on behalf of Microsoft. Also, if you're watching this and you're not subscribed yet, then make sure to smash that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. And without further ado, let's jump into our example. So today we're going to take a look at task.whenall and specifically how we handle exceptions in this scenario. This is done wrong in most applications. So let's dive right in. So let's imagine the following common scenario. We have some client and it's doing some API call. So if we look at what I did to set up the scenario, then we're taking the repository number and all we're doing is we're waiting the number of seconds corresponding to the number and we're returning the number. So again, here in the first line, we're waiting one second and the value here is one. And over here, we're waiting two seconds and the value here is two. Now we can see that we're calling them one after the other. So in total waiting three seconds, but in many cases, we don't need to wait for the result of one task to call the next task and we can do this asynchronously. So let's imagine that that's the scenario in our application. So instead of this, we have get repo one task and the same thing we have here, get repo number two. And now we want to await both in the same time. So we can say over here results and this equals yes, test that went all and we pass it both of the tasks. So we create here a new task that will be completed when both of these tasks are completed. Then by awaiting the task, then we get the actual results, which is an array of the results. So what we expect to have here is an array with two items where the first item or index zero is one and in index number one, we have two. So running this, then as we expect, this should take about two seconds. And then we have over here one and then two. Now, this is a very optimistic scenario. Of course, our clients aren't always going to be so successful. So let's imagine that instead of the behavior that we did, Instead, it always throws an exception after that amount of time, right? So let's say over here, something that has the repo number yes, is following. So again, now we're calling it twice. The first one will throw an exception after one second. The second call will throw an exception after two seconds. So if you're familiar with test.winall, then I'm curious what you think is going to be the exception that's thrown. So I'm running it. You can pause the video and think about it while this is running. Okay, so we got our result and we can see that the exception that we got is the first exception that was thrown. It's not an aggregate exception of all the other exceptions or something like that. It's only the first exception. So first and foremost, let's put this entire thing inside a try catch. Great, now we know that this exception over here isn't enough because it's only the first exception that was thrown. So instead, what we might want to do is we might want to look at this test that we're creating and look at the exception property. So the way this looks is we can say when all task, and this will be test dot when all yes. And then over here, we'll actually await this task, right? Let's just fix the typo. Okay, it's following. So again, we're creating here the task. This won't throw an exception no matter how long we'll wait because it's thrown only when we await the task. So we're waiting here the task. Then over here, we have the when all tasks variable, which has the exception property. And if we look at this exception, then it's an aggregate exception and it should contain all the exceptions that were thrown. Okay. So let's say for now, some variable, let's put here a breakpoint. Let's run it and let's look at what we have. Okay. So we hit the breakpoint and then looking at the exception that was thrown, then we can see that this is indeed only the first exception like we saw before, but the exception property has all the exceptions that were thrown. We can see it's an aggregate exception. And over here we have both of the exceptions. Now you might think to yourself, okay, great. So if I really want to throw all the exceptions that occurred, then all I need to do is say throw on this thing. And this will actually throw the exception, the aggregate exception that contains all the exceptions. We know that this isn't null because we only arrive over here when an exception was thrown. Well, if that's what you're thinking, or if that's what you're doing in your application, then you are wrong because that's not the scenario. And let's demonstrate when this isn't the scenario. So let's look at our method again. And instead of throwing an exception, let's throw over here an operation canceled exception. Okay, this is an exception that can be thrown if the cancellation token was canceled or if the method simply throws this exception. It's not uncommon that such an exception is thrown. 
So now let's debug it again and see what we have. Okay, so we hit our breakpoint, and now if we look at the exception, then we see that same thing like before, it's the first exception that was thrown and it's an operation cancel exception. But looking at the exception property, then we can see that it's null. Now this behavior might seem like, okay, so all we need to do is check if it's an operation cancel exception, then to throw this, otherwise to throw this, but that's not the case as well. So to demonstrate that, let's create here another task and let's say that only task number two throws an operation canceled exceptions and the other ones throw some other exception. So this is easy to demonstrate. Let's say yes, something similar to this. This throws an operation canceled exception and this throws something that has the repo number. Yes, it's following. What we have now is we get a number. If it's repo number two, then we throw an operation canceled exception. Otherwise, we simply throw an exception. Now, when we're calling when all, then we also need to pass it repo number three. So these two should simply throw an exception and this throws an operation canceled exception. What do you think is going to happen? What do you think this is going to be? And what do you think this is going to be? Okay, so we hit the breakpoint and I don't know what you guessed, but the exception that we have over here is again, the first exception that was thrown. That is not an operation canceled exception, but one of them was an operation canceled exception. So how do you think this affects the exception property? And the answer is that it contains all the exceptions that are not an operation canceled exception, which means that again, is if all the exceptions that are thrown over here are not operation canceled exception, then this will contain only the first exception and this will contain all the exceptions. If all the exceptions that were thrown were operation canceled exception, then again, this will contain the first operation canceled exception and this will contain null. If it's some combination where some of this is operation canceled exception and some of it is just a different exception, then this will contain the first non operation canceled exception. And this over here, the pr exception property will contain only the non operation canceled exceptions. Okay. Now the reason why this is problematic, because it means we can't look not at this exception that is thrown and not at the exception property as the source of truth to what actually happened. The only place that we can look at that actually has the details are the original task where each one of them has the corresponding status that is correct and the exception if it contains the exception. So for number two, we can see over here that the status indeed is canceled. Okay, another important note is that even though we're demonstrating it by throwing an operation canceled exception, what you may have in your application is you might have some cancellation token that you have over here. So let's say that's the token. And let's add this as a parameter. And then over here, let's give it some default value and let's pass it over here to the delay method. So what we have over here is we have some cancellation token. We're passing it over here and let's imagine that it's canceled very early on. So what happens now is that when we call this method, then this will throw a task canceled exception, which is derived from operation canceled exception and will run into the same scenario. So even if in your application, you're not explicitly throwing an operation canceled exception, you may indeed fall into the category of what we're talking about today. So now we know that only these tasks contain all the information that we need. So now let's move on to the holistic approach of how to handle errors in this scenario. So as you probably already guessed, then what we want to have is an array of these three tasks, pass this array over here, and then we can use it over here. So the way this looks is as following, let's say tasks equals new, and yes, let's create an array with the three tasks, then we can pass it over here. And now we have the tasks that we can check their status afterwards. We can also take this and put it back over here because we aren't going to use the original task. And also, of course, we can make it more concise by moving these three over here, and then we can get rid of everything around. And now this is a bit more concise. Now we don't care about which exception was thrown over here because all the details that we need sit over here inside the tasks array. Okay. So what we have now are the three tasks over here and we're passing them to the when all then this when all call waits until all three methods finish throwing their exceptions. And then it takes the first one. That's not a operation canceled exception, unless all of them are operation canceled exception. And that's the exception that's thrown. We arrive at the catch block. And then over here, we have the tasks that now we can use to whatever error handling that we have. If it's 
logging the exceptions, if it's sending some metrics, or if it's throwing an aggregate exception that contains all the details, now we aren't losing any information. So that's it. Let me know how you do it. Let me know if you did something similar to this or if you're doing it in a wrong way in your applications today. I'm curious to hear. That's it. And I'll see you in the next one.